All right, so in this video today, we're gonna talk about a very serious topic. It's spiritual, uh, spiritual spouses. We're gonna be talking about sleep paralysis. Have you ever woken up with that terrifying feeling of, oh no, something's holding me down? Have you seen a black, dark mass? Have you seen something in the corner of your room, a sinister look on its face? Have you sensed an evil presence around you and gotten chills all, all over your entire body? I'm here to tell you, I pastor a very large multi-site church here in America. I've got watch parties for our Sunday services all around the world. I've been trained by the Gospel Coalition Reform Community and the Charismatic Pentecostal Community. I'm secularly educated uh, as well and, and have a degree from a top 10 university. I'm not crazy. I'm not an idiot, I'm not a fool, but I am somebody who has sought the supernatural, who knows the spiritual realm is real, and I'm here to uncover what might possibly be happening in your life. And so if you stick around for the entire duration of this teaching, I believe that your eyes will be open and you will be able to finally rid yourself of whether it is a spiritual spouse, whether it is some sort of necromancy, uh, that's witchcraft that's turned into sleep paralysis, or, and I wanna be fair, if it is just biological in nature. And so in other words, sometimes these things are not spiritual, they're biological. And so if you stick around for each one of my points and the scriptures that I'm going to give you, not only will you learn so much and you're gonna hear some crazy stories that I'm gonna tell about my own life, but I believe that you can get free and never experience it again. Now, I wanna ask you to do this. Hit the subscribe button, make sure you join my channel so you're subscribed and you're following me, but I want you to begin to type your stories in the comments down below right now because as you share your story I believe that many more people are going to be free as well so without further ado I don't want to waste any more of your time thank you for subscribing and telling your story in the comments let's jump into this teaching so the concept of a spirit spouse sometimes you hear it referred to as spiritual spouse or spirit spouse is a widespread phenomenon of shamanism and so it's distributed through continents around the world. So you will hear this phrase, spirit spouse. Have you ever heard this phrase? Hit the thumbs up right now if you have. And you see this across many continents around the world. So often, these spiritual husbands or wives are seen as a helping spirit, and they help a shaman assist in their work of witchcraft, okay? And it's very important that you understand this, that it's viewed in many cultures that a spirit spouse will actually cause um, you know, somebody to, to actually be successful in witchcraft. So there's a relationship, come on, do you hear me, between shamans and their spirit spouses that's expressed romantically, sexually, or sometimes it's just purely symbolic and I'm, t it's, this is, I'm gonna go a little bit deeper and, and you're a part of this channel because you love to go deep. These are the things that you're not going to hear in Sunday school. There's many pastors who don't even know this exists, but you know that I have traveled around the world. I've worked in cultures like the Caribbean that have um, you know different voodoo and obia. I've been to South America in Colombia where I see witchcraft all the time. And you see this, and so I'm gonna speak on this. I'm gonna take you to the Bible in a few moments, so stay with me. So shamans, though, they report engaging with their spirit spouses through dreams, through trance-like states, and other ritualistic elements, okay? And in some cultures, you know, you actually have to gain a spiritual spouse that comes to you at night and in order to prove that you are a legitimate shaman. So. There's all these examples of uh, this happening, okay? Now, I wanna, just as, as a quick side note, and we're gonna jump into the Word, we're gonna jump into the Bible, but uh, also, I believe that there are also counterfeit spirits that have visited, because we know that the Scriptures say that Satan comes as an angel of light. So there are counterfeit spirits that have come to nuns claiming to even be Jesus Christ and the be brides of Christ. So there are counterfeit spirits there. In other words, um, they come as Jesus, but it's a counterfeit Jesus. And you even see these brides of Christ with these nuns that have been made as well. And so uh, whether it's sleep paralysis, 
Now, I should have said this earlier on in the video, but I'm going to say it now. Um, hello, somebody says, hello, spiritual father, Betty, good to see you. I love the comments lighten up. You guys are telling each other, take notes, guys. Make sure you don't miss this. It's very hard to find good teaching on spiritual spouses or to uh, um, actually found, find teachings on sleep paralysis and this, the potential spiritual implications. So keep taking notes. Let's go a little bit deeper. So I need to say this, though. Uh, this is for mature audiences. If you are a child, if you are not of the age of accountability, maybe under 18, um, you know, I'm, I'm just telling you this, this content was not made for children. The stories that I'm going to tell and the nature of the topic that I'm talking about requires you to be of a certain age, accountability, and for you to, um, to, to be mature, okay? And, and so I just need you to understand that it's for, if I had a button, I'd hit it now, mature audience only. Okay, and now that I said that, let's go a little bit further. There are people who struggle with a phenomenon called wet dreams. They have orgasms in their sleep as a result of erotic behavior. Now it runs the gamut from tormenting dreams that don't stop, and it could be the result of an open door from pornography, it could be the result of an open door for, from some form of molestation or rape in their past, and, and it opens that door, but they experience orgasms in their sleep, but then let's go a little bit further. Some of them actually encounter demonic activity where they feel the sheets move, the bed shake, and a physical weight and presence on top of them. And they are getting raped by a demon, by a spirit. Now, if, I, if what I said to you is crazy, I'm going to take you through the Bible because, listen, um, there's going to be people's stories that you read in the comment, comments of this video that align with what I'm telling you now. These people are college educated. These people are six and seven figure earning people. They're not crazy, but they will tell you. And I am going to share even my own stories and put my own reputation on the line. We are going to address the, um, the scientific and biological implications of this. And there may be some of you that leave this teaching and you say, Pastor Mike, what I learned most is that there are things I need to change in the physical realm and this was not demonic. Okay, so I don't believe that all sleep paralysis is demonic, but I do believe that there, there are demonic bases for this for many people. And until you address the spiritual, you will not uh, receive full freedom from this. Okay, okay, now let's talk about this. Now, for the note takers here, I gave you the introduction. We talked about the connection between a spiritual spouse and shaman. So it's rooted in witchcraft. And you need to understand that for those of you who have a spiritual implication of that. So you might be saying, well, Pastor Mike, I've never done witchcraft. Pastor Mike, I've never participated in it. In it. it doesn't mean that someone in your bloodline has not participated in it, or it doesn't mean that perhaps you have done things like horoscopes, Ouija boards, your signs, come on somebody, I'm talking, that you don't think is witchcraft, but you've operated in witchcraft, and you opened up the door to it, okay? So spiritual spouses, so I tell Incubus, Succubus, and Lilith, okay, they can attack you with sexual encounters and physically molest, you know, like rape, they can, you know, and, and actually pervert and cause a lot of problems in your life. Now, some dreams turn into reality. So sometimes it can start with a dream and then it can evolve into like waking up, your eyes are open, you hear the physical realm, you know that you're fully awake, but you are still paralyzed and you feel like something's on top of you, okay? And these it can transition from a dream to reality. Have you ever had that happen, okay? Where it transitions from a dream to a reality. And you, you can actually walk around in your waking hours and you can say, you know, I feel violated. I, I feel as if I was raped. Come on, it's so important that you share these teachings and get the word out because many people need to hear what I'm saying right now because it's gonna bring a lot of clarity where there's been confusion. And so they're walking around saying, you know, I feel like I got, you know, raped or I got taken advantage of. Now, there's not a lot of preachers talking about this because you go to these gummy bear frou-frou churches. Yes, I just said frou-frou. 
and these pastors want to quote you Jeremiah 29, 11, or better yet, they want to quote you John 3, 16, but you don't, you could never even quote John uh, chapter 3, verses 14 and 15, which talks about the snake being lifted up. Come on, you, so you don't even know the whole Bible because your pastors have conveniently um, deleted out the things that are, that are weird in the Bible because they didn't want to offend you, okay? And so in Genesis chapter 6, you have these spiritual entities that are actually having physical sexual relationships with human women and having the ability to impregnate them. And they have this offspring, the Nephilim, which here on my channel, if you're subscribed, go back and watch the video teaching on the Nephilim. I'm about to do part two very soon here. And so maybe you went to um, a church and you were in Bible school or, you know, your little, uh, you know, Sunday school rather. Maybe you went to a Catholic parochial school and you learned some of the Bible, but you don't know that according to Genesis chapter six, there were spiritual beings that were able to exist in both dimensions, both the spiritual realm and the physical realm, and they produce offspring called the Nephilim. And so if you're going to tell me as a pastor, and I'm speaking to all the people who call themselves Christians, I mean, I, come on now, I'm calling you out or I'm calling you up, either one, uh, you can't delete out of the Bible what I'm talking about. You simply cannot remove it. It's like if you believe in the Genesis account of creation from chapters one through three, but you don't believe in Genesis chapter six where spiritual beings were creating offspring with human women, um, stop calling yourself a Christian, straight up, okay? And um, I just need to help you understand that this is possible that it's spiritual, okay? And so let's go a little bit deeper now. Are you ready? How are your notes looking? Are you jotting this down fast enough? Isaiah chapter 34, verse 14 says this, the wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with jackals and the wild goat shall bleat with its companion. But here's the important part. You have a, you have a, um, a semicolon, which is a coordinating conjunction. It's adding two similar ideals, ideas together. And it says, also the night creature shall rest there and, and find for herself a place of rest. So you have, in some translations, the mention of Lilith directly, and you have many people that have come to believe and understand that Lilith is a night demon who is sexually wanton. In other words, actively seeking out victims to um, sexually violate. And you have this mention, that's Isaiah chapter 34, verse 14. And let me read it again. The wild beast of the desert shall also meet with the jackals and the wild goat shall bleat for its companion. So you have this imagery of nighttime, nighttime imagery and the joining together, the joining together for mating, okay, right? The wild beasts of the desert shall meet with the jackals and the, they shall bleat with, with its companion. And then you have this description of this night creature shall rest there and find herself a place of rest, okay? And this is very important for you to understand because you have this, this imagery of um, a, a, a spirit with a specific assignment to actually go in the nighttime and to find you and to sleep with you. Now, I wanna tell a story. I came into an understanding of the reality of the supernatural realm as a child. I had some supernatural experiences. Now, I'm gonna put my reputation on the line. I just provided for you two scriptures, and I'm gonna to continue to go a little bit deeper here, and I'm gonna tell you some instances. I was tormented in my, in my sleep from my earliest recollections. And, and again, some of you know me, you trust me. Some of you are new to my channel, you're new subscribers. And I'm gonna take a leap of faith and hope that the Spirit, you, the Holy Spirit in you bears witness with what I'm telling you right now because you could actually look at me as a crazy man before I'm done telling these stories. But I need you to hear me say this. When I was three years old, I remember being woken up 
and in the middle of the night, totally tormented in my sleep and seeing my entire room covered with frogs. And I believe that there was a supernatural dimension of demonic authority over my life. My grandmother was heavily involved in voodoo and witchcraft. They did seances and all kinds of practices on my mother's side. There was uh, sexual sin, murder on my father's side. And I believe that there were open doorways and portals to the demonic over my life through inheritance like you wouldn't believe. Dream catchers and Native American shaman practices opening up all kinds of doors. So some of my earliest memories are waking up out of nightmares repeatedly at the age of three, four, five, six, seven. Now, for me, sleep paralysis started at a young age. And it all culminated to my teenage years where I was stricken with this very thing. And I would wake up as a teenager. Now, I want to tell you something crazy. I would wake up as a teenager and feel like I was being raped. And I would wake up to it physically. Now, this was back in the 90s. And I actually put tape recorders in my room to capture noises. I was obsessed with trying to figure out what was causing this and how to solve it. I would have my blanket, and again, I don't care if you guys believe me or not, but I'm t I'm, some of you will, and the Holy Spirit will bear witness to this, and I'm putting my reputation on the line, but this is why I do these teachings, because I know there's other people out there who go to these motivational preachers, motivational speakers, who will never teach you Genesis chapter 6, who will never mention you know, um, Isaiah chapter 34, verse 14, just like I did, and they act like the spiritual realm only exists to pray for your sickness, but not deal with the demonic. The spiritual realm only exists for you to be financially blessed, but not deal with the demonic. So I've got to go there, okay? And that's why I love you guys so much. That's why you share these teachings. That's why you give it a thumbs up and do whatever you can to get, get it out there because you know these teachings are rare. And so for me as a teenager, I was on, I was just like you. Just the same thing that made you click on this video is the same thing that was like, I was um, reading books and whatever. Well, I found a man named Apostle John Eckhart, and I started to obsessively read his books and watch his teachings on local access cable television in Chicago area of the 90s. And he began to talk about demons and deliverance. And I knew that what I was dealing with was not biological. I knew that it was spiritual in nature. I just felt it. So, um, so here's what I started to, to experience, and I just want to tell you my story. I uh, would literally wake up and feel a tug at my sheets, like my, my, my blanket, my sheets, and then all of a sudden it would go from a couple of tugs and I'd be fully awake to fully having them ripped off of me. Like my bed sheets and my, would be fully ripped off of me. And it would, it would be the most terrifying experience in my life. I mean, my heart rate would be through the roof. I would be sweating. I'd have so much anxiety to go, over, uh, to, go to sleep. Other times I would wake up and I would be physically being choked. I'd be gasping for air. And at this point, I, I, didn't, I wasn't trained in deliverance. I didn't, I, I didn't understand how to exercise my authority. Matter of fact, I don't know that I would even consider myself a real Christian at that point yet. I was just getting started in my faith. I was reading the Bible. But I started to learn spiritual warfare. I started to learn demonology. I started to look at the scriptures and understand that Jesus cast out spirits of infirmity. So in other words, there was a form of sickness that was not always physical in nature. It was demonic in nature. And so when I would read the words on the paper of the Bible, I would read the pages of the Bible and say, wait a second, Jesus sometimes said, be healed. And then other times he would cast out a spirit of infirmity. And so there's a demonic origin to this stuff. And I, need, I needed to learn spiritual warfare because I was learning the, the ministry of Jesus. So um, I, I remember finding out that by, because I would do some babysitting for my next door neighbor, that they were also having poltergeist-like experiences, things getting thrown around in their house and these weird things. And I was like, that's crazy because I'm right next door to you and I'm waking up getting choked by demons. I feel like I'm getting raped by demons. Like there's these sexual encounters and it's weird and I don't want it. And I feel like I'm being violated as a result of this. And we started this conversation with my neighbor and her family who were experiencing the same thing. So so um, 
Then what happened, and th this is for me, uh, this is the, the biggest breakthrough that I had, was um, I started finding out about forgiveness for sins, the gospel, Romans chapter 10, verse nine, confess Christ as your savior, believe in your heart that he's a savior and you will be saved. And um, I began to learn about generational curses and that how the sins, um, you know, that basically there can be the, the sins of your ancestors, things that they've done, you know, will uh, begin to be transmitted through the bloodline, okay? And that Jesus came to break that curse so that you can be completely and totally free. And then I begin to learn about the demonic and how when you are a believer, you don't have to be a pastor, you don't have to be a preacher nor an evangelist, you don't have to be ordained or licensed through your local church, but Jesus himself gives you authority over spiritual darkness. He gives you authority to bring strongholds down and then you can literally renounce and break generational curses, things you've inherited, take away legal rights from demons and cast them out. And I, it was one of the most liberating moments in my life because I remember I went from terrified to go to sleep to excited to exercise my spiritual authority. And I was like, devil, you are about to encounter a whole different person. I went from a kitten to a lion and I'm about to roar, and the lion of the tribe of Judah is gonna roar through me, and the, the, the authority that Jesus gave me, I'm about to exercise it, okay? And I, re I remember, that, so at this point, I had tried everything in my power to stop it. I tried to diagnose it. I tried to put tape recorders in my room to catch noises. I tried to, I had actually a video recorder and it only lasted a couple of hours. So I try to stay up late and put the video recorder on so I can capture the sheets and the being ripped off of me and see what it was really happening. And it was, this was all in the nineties. And I said, okay, enough is enough. I am going to deal with this thing the way that I've learned, which is in spiritual, uh, taking spiritual authority over it. So here was the first step of what I did. And I want you to take notes on this. I took myself through deliverance. Okay. And if you want to find out how to do that, go to my YouTube channel. Come on. If you're already subscribed, you know, it's there. It's one of my top viewed video and it, videos and it's how to do self deliverance. And, um, it, a lot of it is repenting, allowing the Holy spirit to target which things you should be confessing. And he'll, he will bring to your mind things to speak and to, um, repent of, and then you break those curses, you renounce it, and then you start to cast it out, and you can actually do self-deliverance. It's one of my most viewed videos, and you can find it here on my channel. And I literally ended up throwing up in my bathtub. Uh, I, I threw up in my bathtub. I never thought I was gonna throw up. I, I, you know, I didn't even know this stuff was really that real, but the Holy Spirit started showing me generational things to confess and repent, get it under the blood of Jesus. And then I started vomiting violently. And it was crazy. Demons were saying no and speaking through me. I was a teenager and um, nobody was home when I did it because I was too afraid to, you know, like I didn't wanna be that weirdo. And um, demons were speaking through me and I was having this crazy uh, war with these demons. Now, I'll be honest with you, um, it was weird. And, and for those of you that are like, you know, kind of blown away by this, like, hey, is this real? Just read the stories in the comments. They're in the chat. There's thousands of people right now in this video that will prove to you that, it, you know, it is weird, but it's not, it's not fake. And there's a difference between weird and fake. You know what I'm trying to say? And so for me, when I started to get deliverance as a teenager and taking myself through, through deliverance, it was like, this is weird, but it's definitely real, okay? Uh, matter of fact, a couple Sundays ago, I was doing a mass deliverance at our Indiana location and a crack addict came in, totally addicted to crack heroin, and he started to get deliverance. He never even heard of deliverance and demons came out of him. And he, while he was going through deliverance, he kept going, whoa, whoa, this is weird, this is crazy. But when it was over, he said, this is the most real thing I've ever experienced. I didn't even know what a demon was. I didn't know anything about this. Matter of fact, it's been a couple of weeks and he's on the front row worshiping every Sunday. Can I get an amen in the chat right now? Come on, smash that the thumbs up if you're feeling the fire on this and he's bringing his kids to church right now and he's completely, totally free. And so there, it's possible for it to be weird, but real. 
And so anyways, back to the notes, you, you know, when you need to take yourself through, through deliverance. Okay. That is my biggest, uh, my biggest, biggest, biggest item today is take, go through, take yourself through deliverance and start there. And, and I, there are deliverance ministries and deliverance workers. And there's people on Isaiah Saldifar's map that you can hit up geographically if they're close to you. But I would also suggest always taking yourself through self-deliverance because it's such a uh, precious journey you go on with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit, because you get a closeness with him where he shines the light on generational inheritance. He shines the light on things. There's, it's just such a deep form of prayer. So clear out some time and go through self-deliverance. So I did that. Now, I was the guy before self-deliverance who didn't want to turn the light off, would strategically time out when I turned the light off to go to bed, would feel like entities were walking behind me down a hallway in my house. I mean, straight up demon infested roach motel for hell that was literally happening, you know, in my house. And here's the thing. This was the environment of my homes growing up. Um, multiple abusive stepdads, poverty, drug usage. I mean, craziness was happening all around me. So it, it, it makes total sense that I was encountering the demonic, that I was even experiencing what you would be, you would hear termed as poltergeist like experiences, because what I've learned now is that sin opens up the door. Sin becomes the portal. And it's not like these demons care about inhabiting your house. They're actually inhabiting you, your soul, your body, and they're manifesting these things around you so that way um, they can continue to, to strike fear in your life and keep you bound. Okay, how many of the how many of you are being helped by this? It, doesn't it, doesn't this feel like the support and the community that you've needed? I mean, do you feel a little less crazy that it's possible to experience something we, weird, but it be real? Do you feel it in the comments as you're reading the hundreds of comments going by right now of people saying, "I've experienced a spirit, spou, spiritual spouse. I've experienced Lilith, incubus, succubus. I've experienced these things. You're not crazy. Night terrors, uh, wet dreams." Dreams, come on, sexually being molested or raped by spirits. And some of you know what I'm talking about. And the funny thing is, if you go to Africa, if you go to South America, I minister extensively in Latin American countries all day long. They know this is real. It's just for many of you who are my my North American brothers and sisters watching right now. You this might be blowing your mind. Everybody else is like, yes, let's get to the prayer. Okay. Now the last thing I want to touch on, if this has helped you, make sure that you share this video right now. The, the, the truth only gets out if you share it. Okay. These algorithms only work for Jesus. If you hit the share button and blast this into every single group you're a part of, text it to your friends, tag their names in the comments. Okay. Um, guys, we're not an audience, we're an army. So let's fire up right now. Make sure you smash that thumbs up and, and hit that thumbs up right now. Okay. Now for me, after deliverance, all of this stopped and it never returned. I had a definitive line in the sand where I say enough is enough. I took myself through deliverance and I expected that I was going to wake up in the middle of the night and do battle with the devil. But guess what? The devil never came because he wasn't outside of me. He, he, the demons were inside of me. And so once I got deliverance, that manifestation of night terrors, that manifestation of a crippling and debilitating fear, that manifestation of sleep paralysis went completely away. Okay. So that is for many of you, you need to do that. Okay. Now let's talk about the biological component. And I want you to stick around because I, you know, for this entire, cause I've got, I'm saving the best for last. We're about to pray in a, in a little bit, but let's talk about sleep paralysis. Now, there is the demonic form of it, which many of you have encountered, which includes like sexual activity and or being strangled or physically held down, which I have experienced that and it was terrifying and it's exhausting. It robs you of your strength. It robs you of your peace. It robs you of your sleep. But there, but there is a, a biological necessity for sleep paralysis in the form of just simply chemicals that get you into REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep. So all of us should be paralyzed when we sleep. 
And if you're not, you, you walk around, if you walk around and carry out the, your dreams, something is wrong with you. Okay. You, you're supposed to be paralyzed when you sleep. Okay. Now there are chemicals. Matter of fact, just recently in 2012, scientists finally figured out what chemicals cause sleep paralysis and they discovered them. And it's necessary that all of us would be paralyzed because then when we go into the REM sleep, the one that's restorative, the deepest form of sleep, then we don't carry out our dreams. And so you should be paralyzed. The thing that we're talking about specifically in this video is waking up and your body's paralyzed, but there's some demonic entity that is holding you down or present in that moment. I know, okay? And so you need to understand that sleepwalking is not a good thing, right? Uh, be, and so you, it's like you should be paralyzed, but waking up and still being paralyzed and encountering the demonic, you need deliverance, you need freedom. So if it is biological in nature, I just wanna tell you, and I'm gonna get, and this is because I'm also, for many of you, you consider me your pastor. For many of you, you even attend V1 Church, the, the church that I pastor, and you consider me a spiritual mentor, a spiritual pastor to you, and, you know, a voice in your life. I just wanna tell you straight up, you need to start putting your phone aside before you go to bed and introducing uh, what I would consider um, sleep hygiene. Okay, I'm gonna do this quickly because I wanna get to the prayer. You need to uh, experience sleep hygiene, all right? So what does that mean? An hour before bed, put your phone away, stop putting blue light of your screen in your eyes, start winding down, read a good book, read the Bible, pray, pray brush your teeth, wash your face, take a sh hot shower before you go to bed if you need to, get your muscles relaxed, put some clean sleep clothes on. Come on, I love you, I'm being a spiritual dad right now. Lower the temperature of your room if you can. Get it down below 70, 70 degrees here in the United States, whatever that is overseas. Lower the temperature. Maybe consider getting a fan going if you need some white noise. Um, do all the things that you can to bias yourself towards um, you know, good sleep. For me, I, you won't see me drink anything caffeinated past uh, two o'clock, three o'clock at the latest, but I try not to. Why? Because I'm letting all the caffeine, caffeine get out of my body, run it. You know, I, I have to, you know, you can't blame everything on the devil. Okay. And so all these tips that I just gave you, if you are doing all those things, if, you know, for me, you guys have watched me lose weight right in front of you. You know, I was overweight. Matter of fact, I started snoring when I was over 220. So once I got over 220 pounds, I started snoring. That's not a demon, that's, that's fat. <laughs> and so I lost all this weight. I'm not snoring anymore. Um, you know, working out, getting those, you know, even for walking is a workout. You know, you don't even, walking is great for you. And so I just wanna say if, but this is the grand finale and we're gonna pray. If you're exercising, your diet is right, you got your room below 70, you, you've darkened your windows so that you're actually blocking the, the, the sun, you know, the, even the moon and the, the lights out, whatever it is. If you're eating right, if you're eliminating caffeine before two o'clock so it's out of your system and you're doing all those things and you are still being tormented, if you're still experiencing sleep paralysis, you need deliverance. You need freedom. And I'm here to tell you that if you will confess your sins, accept Jesus Christ as your savior, deal with generational sins, if you'll break every single curse off of your life, you can be completely and totally free from incubus, succubus, Lilith, whatever the name of that foul spirit that's tormenting you in your life. And most likely, and I need you to understand this, demons work with demons that you very rarely just are dealing with one spirit. You're probably dealing with a host of spirits. Even the concept of spiritual spouses come from shamans. It comes from witchcraft. So you probably have a host of demons all working together, orchestrating your demise. The Bible says that Satan come, came to kill, to steal, and destroy. And so demons work together because killing you physically is not enough. 
stealing your destiny, stealing from you financially, stealing from you in your life. That's not enough. And destroying, that is literally kill, steal, and destroy. They want to destroy legacy. They want to destroy anything and everything connected to your life. They work in groups. When Jesus cast out demons, they said, we are legion for we are many. And so you have accumulated things generationally. You've accumulated. And then you were like, man, but I went to college and I still don't advance in life. I go to church every Sunday, but I still don't take that next step in advance. Why do I feel stuck? Why do I feel like I'm, come on, I feel the fire of God all over this right now. Drop a fire emoji in the comments right now if you feel it with me. And you're like, it doesn't make sense. I'm in a coaching network. Why are things not? Because you can't coach a demon. You got to cast it out. I'm taking medication. For many of you, sleep paralysis, if you literally go down the biological course of it, they will tell you, take an antidepressant. And then you end up with pharmacia, come on, which is taking a pill and you can't take a, come on, there is no pill solution for deliverance. And they'll get you on antidepressants. They'll get you on medication, which will dull you down and, and cause you to be less of a person than you're supposed to be. And you will end up going on a direction. And that's why I'm telling you, there are some things that you can't counsel, coach, or cure with a pill. You've got to cast it out. And I want to know who wants to go on that journey with me and face the devil head on. Jesus looked crazy. Look, Luke was, Luke was a physician and he told Luke, there's some things that you being a physician will never cure, but I'll teach you to cast out a spirit of infirmity and that person will be free. Come on. I'm trying to, because somebody says I'm spitting bars in the car. I am dropping bars right now because why would Luke, the physician say, I'd rather be an apostle than a physician because the resurrection power of Jesus Christ is significantly greater than any lotion, potion, or anything that I can concoct as a physician. And so for some of you guys, we honor science. We honor the biology of it. But man, I'm here to give you the supernatural solution, which is Jesus saying, I've came to set the captives free. So let's pray right now. If you need freedom from spiritual spouses, if you need freedom from uh, night terrors, if you need p freedom, you feel like you're being haunted or you're, you're feeling like when you walk down a dark, dark hallway or when you're climbing up a staircase, something's following behind you. If you have sleep paralysis and I'm talking to you, let's begin to pray right now. Father, I thank you for sons and daughters around the world confessing their sins now to Lord that they're laying it upon your feet and saying, Jesus, at the foot of the cross, set me free by your blood. Just one drop of that blood. Set me free, Jesus. Wash me clean by the blood. Renew a right spirit within me. Come on, somebody. Let's get free right now. And Lord, I thank you that generational curses of witchcraft, voodoo, obia are being broken in the name of Jesus right now. And Father, I thank you that they are being released from the curse right now in the name of Jesus. But by your blood, the curse is broken now in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you for freedom from fear. I bind every spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. Every tormenting spirit, every spirit visiting in the night, every spirit parading and masquerading as Lilith, as Incubus, Succubus, now I bind you and cast you out in the name of Jesus. And I command you to loose them and let them go now. You must loose them. Them. I break every curse of shamanism, every curse of sorcery. I break it in the name of Jesus now. Every single curse connected to manipulation, voodoo, witchcraft, domination, I break it in the name of Jesus. And I command you to loose them now and come out in the name of Jesus. Now go every single one of you. And I just release the peace of God that surpasses all understanding right now to begin to be released to them now. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding now in the name of Jesus. I feel, man, I'm going to do something I didn't plan on doing, but I feel the Holy Spirit all over this. I release the fire of God just like Philip, for those who were baptized in water, but have not been baptized with the Holy Spirit in fire. I just release now the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire now in the name of Jesus from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. I release the Holy Spirit and fire to baptize them right now in the name of Jesus.
Come on, and everybody said in the comments, amen, amen, amen. Come on, that concludes my teaching today on spiritual spouses, night terrors. Come on, that sleep paralysis. And I believe that there are hundreds of thousands of testimonies that are coming out of this, this broadcast now in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen.